there she is. <clears throat> Hello! Hi! Hi. How are you? Hey, we just send that pay now. Sorry, 12 things at once, multitasking. Yeah, yeah. I understand. <laughs> Thanks for talking to us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on. Yes, yeah. welcome. So I'm Katie. Hi, Katie. So you Hi. must be Mandy. Mandy Hi. and Katie. Hi. Yep, that's me. <laughs> what great hair you both have. I have hair envy. I have oh, a hair stuff on. <laughs> Yours looks pretty good. I know. Yeah, I it's, it. it's, I, I, to get the link though, I have to have fake, you know. And, oh. and, yeah. <laughs> this is about as long as mine ever gotten in like 40 years of growing. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it looks good. I know. Thank I you. like it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so thank you so much for coming on. Um, when I first heard about you, I had a podcast called Vodka and Ghosts. Oh, and, fun. And our very first episode was about spectrophilia. And everything we looked up, like literally almost every website was like, if you want to know about spectrophilia, <laughs> talk to Patty Negri. Talk to me. <laughs> so me and my yeah, co-host you know, at the time, we just looked at each other and like, we have to find Patty Negri. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is very funny. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, it's, you, you become a world expert in something is hard usually, but you know, when the field is like three people big, it's not so hard to rise to the right. top. I was like, mm, but thanks. Oh, so somebody answer the phone, please. Oh. Somebody, phone. somebody did. Okay. Well, eh. So that's funny that that's how you found me. Ah. Yeah, but we were like, we're not going to bother her. And, um, but I will say we posted um, our very first episode on Instagram and we tagged it, you know, spectrophilia and stuff. And you liked it. And oh, yay. We freaked out. We totally freaked out. Oh. So thank you. Because you got us started off on a good foot. And now I have this awesome podcast with Katie. So thank you for being on it. I love it. Twat. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> No, it feels weird to say it, doesn't it? It does. I love my I my, my husband. He goes, I just finished taping mine, and I go now I'm got another one, and because he calls mine the witching hour, bitching hour, and I go no, this one's even better. Oh. <laughs> We're talking to a couple of twats today. <laughs> Your coffee mug gives me life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Yes, me too. I love it. So I was um, listening to a couple other podcasts and reading some stuff, and um, I saw that you realized that you had your, you realized your gifts when you were at a very young age, um, which I think is beyond fascinating. When you figured that out, um, was your home that you grew up in, was it haunted or were you being visited I was being visited. I, I never, that's the first time anybody's ever asked me that. I guess it was haunted, but it was a fairly, it was a mid-century typical suburban track house. Um, but I, I was, I just knew that the, the, the spirit that hung in the closet was real. The spirit under the bed was real. I could get real information from it. Wasn't overly scared. There was better ones and lesser ones. I had my little friends. I thought, I thought everybody saw him. I thought it was completely normal. I would like out of body travel and my mom would be like, I, she's like, oh, we're going to go meet the, the next door neighbors for the first time tomorrow. It's like, ah, oh, I was there last night. She's like, you have never been there. You're a six years old. You have not been there. I was like, and I would explain every color wallpaper and where the funny couch was. I just thought everybody could do it. That is so cool. Yeah, yeah and, and I was just obsessed with death and the other side. And it wasn't in a morbid way. I wasn't walking around being like goth kid. Absolutely not. I'm pink Barbie girl. But <laughs> as I'm looking at hundreds of Barbies staring at me now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Barbies? <laughs> I, I have many, many. Oh, and none of them are haunted. Hmm. Um, wait, hold on. Sorry, 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 sorry. You're fine. On, on air. On air. Talk later. Caps <laughs> shouldn't matter. This is ridiculous. Okay, leave me alone. Okay. So okay. So no, just answer this. Just answer oh. the. Um, 
so no they were so i was literally seven or eight and i had my first seance i went in the hall because there was no lights and no oh no doors and stuff towels under the doors and and realized i didn't know dead people <laughs> I was like, right. And I'm like, John Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe. It's how much Marilyn Monroe has come through my life. And my windowless, lightless hall filled with orbs and spirits and flying wow. through the hall. Me and my friend, my girlfriend, the girl next door, we ran out screaming. <laughs> but inside, I was like, yes, 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 it's real and it's controllable. Because I came up with my first chance. I mean, I wasn't into my herbs and oils. Like, I'm a seance now. I'm like, woo. But I <laughs> came up with my first like a little cadence chant and everything. It was just in my blood and how to open it and close it. Wow. Yeah. That and is, so then I've spent, wow. you know, the next, you know, you know, half a century perfecting that, which is what I do. Wow. Are you the only one in your family that is a psychic medium or has any of those talents? I think the gifts were came from both sides. I'm the only one who ever lived into it. Um, my, my reason my mom wasn't freaked out, um, she was really intuitive, but just lived in a very regular world, but she'd always say, when I'd say somebody came, she goes, yeah, grandma always, grandma always knew that too. Grandma had somebody visit, grandma would know when somebody would die. So it was really a matter of fact. And my mom, even for not being psychic, my, I have a way older brother, he was in Vietnam and two times he caught on fire. And both times my mom sat up in bed with crackling like fire. And she didn't know it was that until afterwards. And that was the same day. So it's in my mom's side of the family, wow. definitely. And that's kind of the Irish, English, European. And my dad's side came from Turkey and Spain. And they're kind of this, like the, the Mediterranean, Sephardic. And I think it's on that side of the family, though, they completely went against it. My grandfather was this really famous psychoanalyst, philosopher who wrote books against spirituality and religion. He was like practically evangelical um, atheist. And wow. A leader, a big leader here in LA, hang out with all the movie stars and, and wrote books about spirituality and religion, but kind of his version of debunking. But I read his books now. And even though he uses different languaging, it's almost my belief system, except that I believe where every religion has its truths and the through line of energy, um, it's just a different template. You know, some people use God, Jesus, whatever. Some people use pagan, da, da, da. Some people use new age. Some people use science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. I know you work with the light. I do. Mostly. Oh, I mean, but I know you've like with ghost adventures you've gone to really dark places mm -hmm. can you remember like anything that just you yeah to I get away I, from I, it like you were just it was bad 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 um okay, yeah a few places them and and i do i i i'm a firm believer that this is our realm of existence they really do have to play by our rules People don't know that, so they give their power over to it. But I knew that when I was a baby, a kid. I just knew, you know, you don't want to use anger or fear. That will feed a negative spirit. But if you like, no, this is, you know, more like a disciplinarian parent or a teacher, you tell them no, and it's no. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time. Yes, I go, like on ghost adventures or not going to, ghost adventures doesn't want to go talk to sweet grandma ghosts. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> they want to go talk. <laughs> it's the serial killer ghost who decapitated 48 people. And, yeah. and I never know what I'm getting into with the show. I never know. <laughs> um, and they, they want, they really do want authenticity. Um, he will, they'll give me an address. They'll fly me there, or drive there, pick me up. And they'll go, okay, just walk in and no history of, oh, this happened here, nothing. And, and Zach will say, okay, Patty, you just tell us what happened here. I'm always scared to death. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what if I get crickets? I don't know. What. But it, right, the places right. are so charged. I've never got nothing. It's always like, okay, there's a spirit over here. This happened over here. Somebody's lying on the ground over here. Um, so I'm not, you know, or we'll be at the museum, which is like, whoo, circus of ghosts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it is. <laughs> circus of ghosts, ghost circus. Uh, but yeah, some of the, I think the darker places, the Black Dahlia house, I've done a ghost adventures there and another show that he was 
the, the first big serial killer. He was yeah. a doctor and chopped up women, hated women. He, he, oh. ah. But you walk yeah. in that house and, and you just feel the ooze of negativity. Oh. And he, that doctor is there and he is holding some of the girl spirits there. Oh my gosh. They won't, the guy who owned it wouldn't let me clear it. He actually crossed over one girl, not Elizabeth Short, not the famous ghost that right. everybody knew about, but he killed like a lot of them. Um, but Tamar, the daughter of this, do this doctor, and then the daughter's daughter, maybe granddaughter, same daughter, an incest thing. But uh, Fauna, she, uh, she, a ghost had come to her that said, yeah, please help me, please help me. And she was on her deathbed and wouldn't die. So then they brought in Fauna in me who's the granddaughter maybe daughter of this doctor wow. and we this one girl we were able to literally like you see on you know go to the light carol and we, we were the right. zach and aaron but that stuff you will never see on tv they're not that doesn't fit the style of their show but right. we but actually that's were amazing able to cross over. it was amazing oh, you, wow. see it, you, felt it, you felt it and it went so that but their other girls are still stuck there and he you know i don't have permission to go in and clear anything whoever owns it right they right kind of rent it out that was really dark um another uh, episode i brought them in Reseda, just a regular little house in Reseda. oh i saw had that Reseda. oh my god that place oozed and i for years those guys would call me and they're just this cute kid i and i would try to <laughs> clear it for him but it would come back it would hide because the house had a super drug background super drug dealer right. there was somebody had died in every room and Ooh. that just lets in such dark energy i could not keep that one clear i could go in and clear it and then you'd walk away and they'd go we back oh, oh my gosh. gosh um yeah that was a tough one um i, I still think want to go somewhere like that i know <laughs> yeah no it's it's it is good again and you can protect yourself you protection methods like i i don't go into a really haunted house i don't know how video this this is the most protective symbol or sigil i know it's a helm of awe it's norwegian it's an eight-sided cross energy goes in and blows it up those you know the vikings needed some good protection um but i you know if you have bad dreams draw this on a post-it put it under your bed it stops bad dreams i put it under my welcome mat at my house it keeps out bad ghosts and burglars it's crazy Ooh, simple you I can like draw that. it in two seconds you know it's, symbols and sigils watch, i'm all about yeah um and each of the guys on Ghost Adventures have their own technique and method within their own belief system. Like Billy's Mr. Palo Santo would, Palo Santo buys it by the hundred thousand pounds of, he told me where to get it for like a hundred thousand at once. You know, um, they each have their own faith in how they do it, but you just have to come up with what works for you to let it go, especially when you are going into the darker places. Right. I think my darkest one, I don't know if you saw any videos on that, wasn't was filming but it wasn't ghost adventures but um i was at a house old hollywood house and we we're filming a documentary it's right in my neighborhood it's literally my neighbor i live in old hollywood hills neighborhood um old movie star houses and this house had been built by charlie chaplin for his girlfriend mary astor who's a movie star of the day in the 20s it was a super party house super I party the house you're talking about yeah um yeah and it looks like a haunted house it's four levels a windy staircase ghost love spiral staircases it looks like it was built by the masons like sacred geometry like 12 things around the turret literally there was a compass drawn in the wood on the floor when you walk in it was just like everything to increase the energy to make it magical spiritual good or bad but uh, so Charlie Chaplin lived there, party house. Then the Rolling Stones managers bought it, and the Rolling Stones lived there, moms and papas, Graham Parson, I don't know who else. And then they, he sold it. And then the person who invented the real life sex doll blowed it, created that there. Um, and then he, and then he moved out. It was too, he thought it was really scary, sex and scary. And then um, Marilyn Manson moved in. And he was my neighbor for seven years. And what? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, he's very cool. He's I mean, ish. Yeah, no, he's cool. He's cool. But he would record in the basement, and so the house itself obviously attracted dark, creative, chaotic, very creative people. It would draw them in. You know, your family. You know, the Ozzy and Harriets aren't going to move into that house. Right. Walk in and go. Oh no let's go down but it, it drew in really cool people and the people who were living there were shooting the documentary when i was there were young filmmakers 
So I was going to call in the spirits that were there, not sweet grandma, like in my personal seances. And this one kid, young people at the table, anybody in that late teen, way early 20s has so much life force. You're always going to get the best paranormal stuff because just their life force is so strong. So this one kid, and I'm real careful. I know what I'm doing and I explain to people. But And my first rule is be respectful. You have to be respectful of spirits. Whatever you believe, be skeptical, great. Try to be open, great. But it, whether you believe it or not, it's real. And they don't like disrespect. Who likes disrespect? Nobody likes right. disrespect. I don't, you don't. So this one kid, young kid, he was at a table full of young people in this little living room. He was getting really disrespectful. He was saying smart alecky things. And first... I felt the ghost getting like uh, edgy and first cool things started happening. Like the French doors flew open, like pfft, everybody's going, ah, screaming. And I'm like, the producer side of me is going, wow, this is like special effects, but real, I would never fake yeah. anything, but the, somebody, Oh, wow. That's so weird. And they closed it. And then at another exact point, the French doors flew open again. And I was like, ah! <laughs> and then it, it's building, it's building, this tension is building. And then there were speakers on the floor, you know, those old fashioned like speakers, and they were just sitting on the floor. And they, they came on with this white noise. This, this, ah! oh. it, what, what? They weren't even plugged in. We looked later, they weren't even plugged in. White noise, like yeah. sounded like a ghost box, sounded like a spirit box. Yeah. But wow. They weren't plugged in. Uh, wow. so that was happening, but things are building. And I was just trying to talk to the spirits, not overly paying attention to this kid. And then we were working with a Ouija board and we got down, we were talking about some really scary things that had happened in the dirt basement. That was even too scary for Marilyn. He dirt was basement? The dirt, it's always the dirt basement. Oh, Everyone yeah. in all those <laughs> houses. Even the Black Dahlia house, it was the dirt basement. Oh my God. I, um, yeah always the dirt basement but anyway <laughs> he, he, we were getting some information of some kind of icky stuff that had happened there in the 20s and this kid said something really stupid and that we had four cameras filming this so that's a lot usually you have two or three we had four cameras so my cameraman or the cameraman facing him when he said something really stupid the cameraman burst into flames shut up like a V up his back, like angel wings of fire, burst into flames. Everybody's screaming. Two cameras caught it. Two cameras did. His camera, of course, didn't catch it. He's on fire. Oh wow. Another camera, like, started filming the ceiling or the floor. I guess you test the ability of a cameraman by the room bursting into flames. And I'm uh. screaming. I'm, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. Cool medium witch Patty becomes medic Patty, of which I am. I'm, I'm like, drop and roll. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm shutting it down. I am calling in my wards and guardians, shutting it down, shutting it down, closing the veil. His shirt burnt off him like poof, like it was a polyester and nylon. It was a cotton. It should not have burned off like that. And and there's all this blistering on his back. We are done. Seance done. I don't care what we're filming. This I've never had anybody spontaneously combust. I but, know. That's what I was just thinking about. Spontaneous human combustion. Maybe it's yeah. Maybe it's okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, so but the, bad guy, the guy, but the guy who caught on fire he was like he was inspired he, he's a filmmaker himself he, he was like oh no i'm okay i'm okay it's just a little it's nothing is i'm okay uh he i have a sweater he took off the burnt up shirt he goes i'm fine i'm gonna be really good i looked over at the kid and he got really well behaved Oh, I bet he's, uh, like, oh, he's a choir boy now. Okay, good. So, <laughs> oh, right. oh so I, I talked to the spirit, literally. I'm like, come on, dude, we're not even going to get rid of you at the end of the seance. Usually I shut it down, but the people who live here don't want it. I know you're not a demon. You're just a cranky ass ghost. So shut up and be good. Will you be good? And he <laughs> right. said he would be good. Right. So we did have a few more things. We had a glass I've, I've never seen that at any other home. fly 15 feet from anybody across the room and shatter. I've even in all my ghost adventures, never seen that I would wow. love to see that. in front of me, in front of a bunch of people that didn't get on film. It tried to push the, my guy off the cliff a little bit, but I gave him a mojo bag. But the coolest thing that turned it all so cool <clears throat> is three weeks late. So we finished the seance all was well. Three weeks later, the cameraman, he showed me, he goes, Patty, look at my back and he showed me the small of his back where he had caught on fire and it had looked like he went and got a tattoo of a dragon shut up That's he, literally it had the open mouth the big sharp teeth the winged head into the shape of a of a serpent and that 
it is the exact energy yeah. I called in to shut down the sands. Exactly. I work dragon magic. Dragons everywhere. I mean, there's a very big fancy. I work dragon magic. So I'm like, oh my God, you have a tramp stamp of a dragon on your back. <laughs> that is about the coolest thing I've ever seen. I and he thought so it. too. He was so inspired. He actually wrote a script, a horror script. Um, he wrote it with Stephen Norrington, the guy who actually wrote League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and the Blade nice. series. Um, they haven't done it yet. I wish they would. But um, about a, t a psychic, a TV psychic, does all the TV shows and a medium, I guess, and doing another reality show. And then a portal opens. And then it turns into a big horror film. <laughs> People and I'm like, uh, yeah, exactly. They exactly. all get dragon tramp stamps. And the cover of his thing is that is is his like non-tattoo tattoo scar marks. But I I sat down with him for like six hours at my dining room table. I go, you can't say that. I would read the script. I go, you can't say that. He goes, but you said that. I go, I know I said that. But those words have too much power. Let's make up words because you don't want to be one of those cursed horror films, now do you? You know, like right. exorcism. <laughs> well, let's give some non you know, non-meaningful, made-up magic words. I know I said those. Either. So, ho again, hopefully they'll do it. But he got another film he did since then. But that was the wildest, I must say. Spontaneous combustion at least once in your life. That, no, no, no. Yeah. that is wild. Yeah. I don't know what's yeah. better, the spontaneous combustion or the dragon train oh. dance that came from it. But I did another seance. I know. I, I, they, they hand in hand. They go together. Um, but I did another seance there. The guys finally moved out recently, actually. Um, and they wanted to do a big final seance and goodbye to the spirits because they were leaving. Um, and the spirits were like so sweet. Everybody was fine. All the dark and negative had gone away. It was, it was wild. I mean, things you really shifts, really shifts. Yeah. Have you ever come, come in contact with a demon? Um, yes, N not as often as people think. Um, I have, and it's scary, and it's, well, you, you go, okay, it's 99% it's of the time that people think it's demons to me, it's just cranky ass ghosts, you know? Right, right. A lot of, demon I, I, wannabes are like, okay, because with a demon, you go, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's I ask whole, because you see a lot of times like they'll come in contact with a really cranky spirit mm -hmm. and you hear the term demon being tossed around a lot. I know. So it, I don't know about you, but it irritates me a little bit. It <laughs> irritates me too, because it takes the power away. If every cranky ass ghost is a demon. Now when you're a real demon, it takes that, uh, it takes the importance away. It does. What is the best way that people can decipher between the two, between a really evil spirit and an actual demon um yeah. number one which i think is the rule for everything in life is is listen to your inner your intuition your spidey senses yeah. <laughs> truly truly you could be scared you know and you could like you know, okay because there's some them cranky dark spirits out there and other things that were never human and getting into the other realms but a dem demon is just going to be so overpowering so it's it's not kind of figure out is it demons you know it's like holy shit i've never anything quite that right whatever right. once it um this might have been demonic um and again i didn't have enough time not the first year halloween special i did there with when they when zach threw me in with lady snake and the ed Gaines cauldron and mm -hmm. father sebastian and the, all that it might well this guys on the floor but the next year we did a four hour live with it was great because it was um he brought everybody in i'm like what am i doing here but i'm there with josh gates of cedar and chris fleming and um joshua warren and justin and bill chapel all these great inventors and he was doing four hours really locked down in the in the museum and it and that was another throw me down in the basement with lady snake we all <laughs> except her she they even put her in a different he does this to me they put her in a different hotel we all knew we were there we were sequestered together and, and just hanging out i'm like i'm hanging out with the big kids uh, <laughs> uh but not we didn't know it's her then exactly come on patty because you never know what you're gonna get or do he's like and and guess who's here and you want to go in the basement she's doing dark magic so, all right but when i was um when I was walking through the museum, again, pitch bark with black, 
I would, I saw these black, oozy, almost like shadow, but stronger than shadow people. They were, they could have really been, I didn't, I couldn't focus there because we were going to, to go face Lady Snake, but I was seeing and crying all the walls of the museum and I'm like, holy, holy. And they were just oozing out because oh. probably because of what Lady Snake was doing in the basement. Chris Fleming, another medium, he saw him too. I don't, it was oh. like, yeah so that that really might have been demonic in itself but the focus kept going so much you didn't even give it its just attention if it doesn't get all your attention it it doesn't have the power right okay wow that sounds really mm -hmm. creepy so yeah. you mentioned black magic now i know you do the opposite what are what's the difference Dif magic is magic is magic and don't let you and i don't even i don't like the term white witch because white has so many weird connotations i'm a good witch good sounds great good can mean a lot of things i'm good um but i i do not do manipulative magic the the idea of how a spell crafting works is is the same no matter what you do i will only do positive magic and what positive magic really means is not anything to control anybody else without their permission. Mm -hmm. That's that simple. Because I believe there's a Wiccan read, like whatever you put out comes back to you three times. So why would I put out curses? Because that, that energy or evil, that comes back to me. I'm the one that, the karma, it's karma is not the right word. Mm -hmm. This is not a pagan. But that gets you. But more than anything, the world you live in, that you create, is the world you have to live in. So right. if you're putting out controlling people, then people can control you. If you're just doing positive forward movement, that is the world you lived in. And that's what I've lived in since I was doing magic, since I was, again, like five years old. And the difference of a white, white, good magic and dark magic, black magic and white magic, say a love spell. Say say somebody wants a love spell i want the love of my life that sounds good doesn't it a love spell to bring you the love of your life that's good magic okay make him handsome maybe i want him blonde or brunette or purple hair or this or that whatever you want that's good magic but if you say i want a love spell on this specific person mm -hmm. that's black magic because you don't have that specific person's name is as innocent as that sounds i want bob i know we're soulmates because i get this every day i know we're soulmates he just doesn't know it yeah, i know lie. we're meant together he just right. doesn't know it i know it's like yeah no um I, I will not because number one i'm i could probably control bob or whoever this guy is i could probably make him fall in love or obsession with you and that would be the worst relationship you ever had if it wasn't supposed to be he'd be like the stalker guy who wants it and, and you'd right. be like yeah. wanting, wanting to reverse magic to get rid of it another because podcast, we didn't actually. ask yeah. yeah another podcast so you know if you have bob's permission then you probably don't need the love spell bob can i do a love spell on you so you fall in love with me and if he says yes you don't need the love spell so, yeah. but if yeah. so if you're in love with bob and you just say or you think you are but if you don't say that and you go just bring me the love of my life universe whoever you are up there great consciousness god whatever word you want to use bring me the love of my life and guess what? If it is supposed to be Bob, it will work on Bob. But don't use his name. Don't use his likeness because it might be Fred. Right. And and right. we brought in Bob and that was, ruined your life and ruined his life. And now ruined my life because I have coin to pay. Mm -mm. Not <laughs> yeah. worth it. Not worth it. Right. So you end up with those obsessed freaks. Right? See, right. now Lady Snake, she'll work in the dark arts. I think she's a fine person, but uh, I I just, I'm, I love life too much. I'm too happy too much. I that's not my yeah goal. oh yeah same here i'm a good witch i do good magic i'm powerful magic and but That's i create awesome. my world yeah you yeah. have an awesome world i know right oh, thank I'm jealous you. of your world i know your, your world you. sounds oh. pretty amazing <laughs> oh thank you um so in what you were just saying i i'm halfway through the book right now oh okay. uh, so uh i didn't know if you wanted to talk about that just a little bit sure. because I'm going to give it to her as soon as I'm done. But. Yay. Well, I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. Oh, oh your world is like where I want to live in. So I'm okay. loving it. <laughs> it. It's open for everyone. It truly yeah. is. Because we create our world ourselves. Because if you saw in the beginning, that wasn't my world when I was a kid. I mean, it was a fine little suburban world, but I had my issues and my challenges. That's the first part of the book. How I got here was not by just this perfect world. It's like, this sucks. I'm going to change it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Did you snort? I did. <laughs> I, I love snorting. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, let me know what you think. I, I really wanted the book simple, simple, simple. After I wrote it, I, uh, I st I'm like, oh, there's too many words. I don't want... <laughs> <laughs> This is bullshit. It, I, I, I wanted, when I started like 30, whatever years ago, I, I would buy big fancy books and they'd sit on my shelf and be overwhelming. I would buy simple little books by my favorite authors like Scott Cunningham or these simple, easy to read and digest. And then you create your magic from there. So I really styled it after him. I, want, I, I go, I want to write books like him. And it, and it really worked. It's Again, it's simple, whether you're a beginner or you're experienced. And like immediately, it, it, I'm thankful, it got bestseller in like five countries. I, I mean, amazing. I see why. Because oh, it's not like... You. A million words to explain something that you can explain mm -mm. in on a page you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like when i read books that put way too much detail and you're just like okay just tell me what? the outcome right. or tell me you right. know what i mean mm -hmm. you going in circles and going right. in circles and you have to go back to the beginning what yeah right. like, what are you gonna tell me i know what? so it's been really awesome Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm glad you got it. So yeah, you it reminded me she brought up the love spells, and I I just finished that part. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah. They, they 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 were love. It's again, it's shifting our reality, shifting our, and then all of a sudden you're just calling it in. You know, whether you're doing my catnip <laughs> on the front. Oh yeah, yeah. Cats. yeah. Um, or you know the candle work again you're changing your perceptions and you're opening up new doors and you're working with spirit you know right whether working with goddess love energy or cupid or just shifting your spirit well i'll have you know i slept with a glass of water next to my bed last night <laughs> yay did you yeah. did you notice any difference any dreams or realizations or anything um i don't know i i woke up and then i was like oh i need to like ask for th something or say something or whatever but you know what happened to me actually and it could have been a bug but <laughs> i i sat up and i was gonna hit snooze on my alarm and it felt like almost like a feather went, like what and like hit my lips and i was like oh. Oh. and i thought it was a bug but i didn't see a bug but the feeling was like like a feather hit my bottom lip and then <laughs> i was like too freaked out so i just like went and made coffee oh uh, uh, well well don't freak out because maybe it was a fairy kiss or it was weird it was weird i was like uh did this what just work that? <laughs> don't 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 be afraid of a feather or a bug or a fairy what, kiss what my intention was when i went to bed was i wanted to meet my spirit guide so i don't know so that's where you breathe into it going okay this is a little weird i feel something but okay and again don't be afraid are, is this my spirit guide? This is my spirit guide. Show me what that's supposed to mean. Don't yeah. Oh, no. Come on. ...away or stands there. You're my spirit guide. Were you a ghost? Were you ever human? Are you male? Are you female? What are you? Who are you? If it feels yeah. bad, go get out. If it feels, doesn't feel bad, say, talk. Yeah, so but that's good. It really that. works. It really, oh, what it does, literally, the glass of water, I call it dream school, is a conduit. We are 60 something percent water. We are run by the moon tides. That's when you, when you get to the moon chapter, follow the moon cycles. Like we had a beautiful new dark moon the other day. This next two weeks while the moon is waxing, wake up in the morning, go, the moon's waxing. I'm going to add into my life more love, more fun, more lunch with my friends, whatever that is. You know, the full moon be in celebration. The next two weeks, a waning moon. Let go. Oh, I, I worry too much. I don't take enough time for myself. The, uh, the good stuff in your life will come back with grace and ease and the flow of the moon. We're water. But the water by your bed, dream school, 
it's literally like a general bed. Keep your drinking. You're talking to God of life, or I want to meet my spirit guide, or what outfit should I wear tomorrow, whatever. And it's a generator to work for spirit so that you could get that information while you're asleep and that chatty left brain of ours isn't in the way. Because that's what gets in our way in our day-to-day -day life. Oh, wait, I'm feeling energy. Oh, no, that can't be. That's when, you know, when we shut it down. And right. you won't shut it down so much when you're asleep. Huh? Well, yeah. I, I love that you did that. That was fast. So try again tonight. <laughs> I will. I just, uh, I'll try again. I'm not that scared. I mean, honestly, I say oh. real people are scarier than anything paranormal. So. Oh, completely. Real people are way scarier. <laughs> yeah. Because paranormal people really can't help. Paranormal spirits really can't hurt you. You have to work hard to have them hurt you. Right. Real people can hurt you. And if you, if you have fear, put another glass of water. Or this is really works great for insomnia too. It's, it's not in the book. Like say people who have trouble sleeping, put a glass of water. This is my keep me from not sleeping glass. And then you direct everything that keeps you awake, overthinking, thoughts, too much energy into that glass. And again, you throw it out in the morning. But also you could do it. Good, works good with kids who have bad dreams, just like the helm of off, sigil under the bed, take away bad dreams this draw this put it under your mattress and it'll take away the fear and anything that negative that could happen or put a glass of water that's not your dream water not your drinking water but this is my this pulls in anything that's negative or dark or any spirits that i don't want and they go into this glass make it a definitive different place hmm. that's a great idea yeah i'll try it i like that yeah i want to be a magic person <laughs> you are a magic person. I want to be a witch. Embrace. You are. So you are, and you felt it until you ran. <laughs> <laughs> I mostly ran because I thought it could have been a bug. Okay. <laughs> but I didn't see one. <laughs> I, there was something on my mouth. I don't do bugs. I hope my spirit guide is not a cicada or something. Oh my God. That would be funny. <laughs> that would be <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> my my biggest question that I've been dying to ask you. So you're a psychic medium, you're clairvoyant, all of these things. So there's all of these labels, psychic, medium, clairvoyant, intuitive, sensitive. What are the differences between all of those labels? <laughs> labels are labels are labels. I hate labels. Well, okay. Some people are afraid of the word psychic and understandably is so because there's sadly for every one good and legitimate psychic there's a thousand scam artists and right. fakes and people who do some of them are gifted some of them aren't but they really want your money it's not to help you it's upsell you oh you have a curse attached another hundred dollars another thousand dollars oh right. wait yeah there's a fan there's a this you have, no you don't have a demon no you don't have a curse so the street corner psychics give us all a very bad thing so a psychic means that's somebody who could see into the future, see things or past and future, but see things and see pathways of what could happen. I will never say something is going to happen because we have free will. Um, and I think the only person could do that would be God or a supreme being. Because I could say, okay, you guys, when you walk out of the door, a bird is going to poop on your head. I am such a good psychic. I know when that bird's going to poop. I know when you're going to walk out the door. I know when he's going to fly over. And because things got to happen and then you're going to go out there and scared and get pooped on. But if I go, if, if I just go, you guys be careful. Don't walk out the front door. You don't walk out the front door. You walk out the back door. You put up a parasol. You don't get pooped on. So anybody says you're going to get hit by a bus on Tuesday, anything that's fear based or control based walk away. It, anybody who does a real good psychic it should be empowering. Okay. You have this path. You have this way of being okay this is why you pick the wrong men in your life okay this is why you have these issues let's go back to when you were i'm seeing when you were five years old this happened and let's look at that let's rethink that that five-year-old that a psychic looks at past and future and through lines and blocks that's what we do a medium a, a medium is somebody who could talk to the other side talk to dead people uh, you know ghost spirits some elemental spirit guides, whatever, but basically medium is seeing through the veil. The clairs, going back to what psychic or mediumship is, it's, I don't, I just put them all in one big pot. Clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, clairaudient. That just means some people see, 
some people hear, some people smell, some people taste. That's all it means. And I, I think I do versions of all of them. So I'm not going, I'm seeing that ghost or I'm smelling that ghost. When you see, I'm seeing on the inside in my mind's eye, or I'm literally seeing a ghost right here. There's a shadow person. Oh. I just combine them all as the experience experience try not to separate them but some people love just because they love terms i'm clairvoyant clairvoyant i see things i'm clairsentient i smell grandma's perfume and grandpa's uh, you know usually somebody when you have open your gift you start opening all of your, your gifts mm -hmm. and some people are afraid of all those terms they'll use the word like intuitive or spiritual healer or psychic and it's shaman mm. you can, if you don't like witchy words you could use the word shaman because that just means somebody who moves energy to be a witch to me doesn't mean it can mean a religious thing oh, i am wiccan or i am ceremonialist or i'm a chaos magician or i'm, I'm philemic or or it can mean just a practice that i worship the goddess or, oh chaos magic is brilliant it's because it's very irreverent and very magical it's more like the science he said um, it, it's, just, it's sort of like Christianity where you're a Baptist or you're Presbyterian or you're a Catholic or you're whatever, all the different forms. Um, so again, it could be your religion or belief system. I do the eight Sabbaths. I worship the goddess, or it could be a practice to me, witchcraft is a practice. And that means I believe that we can change fate. I believe there is fate. Some things we can't change. There is destiny, but where it's some things we can't change fate. Uh, I wish I was six inches taller. That's fate. I can't. You were born here. You're... But I believe in free will. We, every belief system, we were given free will, whether it's God and man and whatever. And that's what makes us these brilliant beings. We can rewrite our story. You know, maybe in the cards, the cards say you're going to have a long and happy life, but you could like screw that. No, I'm going to be miserable. I don't want to. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to. I want to be a victim. I want to right. be unhappy. Right. We have the power over fate and destiny, and more, more often than not. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Interesting. I don't know how much time you have, but. I'm still good. I got another. I, I was figuring it'd be like somewhere around an hour. Okay. Yeah, that's what we figured too. But ah. one thing, so on your podcast that you do is the magical moment, which is yes. awesome. Oh, I didn't you. know if there was like a short little one you could share with us for our listeners to hear. And then um, sure. where to is, find your podcast and all that stuff too. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, because it, it is basically, a, most of it is from the magical moment when I have time to do it. Sometimes my guests talk a lot, we don't, um, <laughs> is stuff from my book. So what do you want to look at? Um, like I was talking about moon cycles a little bit, protection techniques. Uh, we could look at my breathing. Did you get, you got through the elemental balancing exercises if you got through the halfway. I got through that and the moon cycling. That, that, that could be game changers, the elemental thing to our um investigation coming up oh yeah maybe protection because we are going on a in ghost investigation in next Yay. week so maybe a protection okay so set for very much so so protection both you know physical all the goals you know make sure you are you're someplace safe that you're allowed to be there that's the mundane world things come up work within your belief system i, I always tell people um because if you're praying to jesus and you don't believe in jesus you know it's it work right. whatever you work work elementally and if you don't know your belief system i work elementally call in the strength of a tree and the clarity of the wind blowing through and the the burning of the fire to get rid of negativity that's how i work very like sh very shamanist shamanistic like native americans or the pagans mm -hmm. like i am or peruvians but set up what you're doing whether you believe like um if you have a symbol or sigil you wear, if you believe, wear a cross, wear a, wear a helm of awe, wear a pentacle, wear a good luck charm, or a crystal, something that this is me, this is my protection. I always use eye protection oils. You can get them at metaphysical stores or botanicas. Um, put them all sorts of places, but the most important place to put your protection oil is right on the back of your neck, right where you're, like if you're going up and down, your head and neck go in like and the out. the base of your skull? Yeah, the base of your skull. That okay. is actually the biggest portal on your body. So get a protection oil, and that's actually why when you pray, you bow, bow your. your head to open that up for God or spirit. Interesting. So, so get some, you could put it on the, the, the soles of 
of your feet, the palms of your hand, your third eye to increase, but always put protection oil back at your, the base of your neck, the base of your spine. Oh, you for that um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So go find some, you could yeah. get it online. You can get anywhere you could, and there's better ones and lesser ones, but again, it's the intent behind it. Even if it's some funky little botanic, you're not sure they're using pure essential oils. It's made, it was, it was charged to be a protection oil. I'm a big believer of cascarilla powder, um, which is, it's cheap. It's, it's just literally, it's ground up eggshells. It looks like talcum powder. Um, I would have some for afterwards, like rub it around, rub it around. Um, I, when I'm clearing houses, I put it along windowsills and doors. Um, put a little in the bath that cleans your aura. So okay. it, you could grind up your own eggshells or again, it's really cheap at metaphysical stores, botanicas are online, cascarilla powder. Um, my favorite really cleansing thing is what Billy uses, Palo Santo wood. Mm -hmm. And don't, you, you because it, I'm not a big sage person because sage is really harsh. Mm -hmm. I will occasionally use it, but it gets rid of every, don't use sage before a ghost hunt because you're getting rid of the ghost. Yeah, right. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Come here, like, like, <laughs> like somebody before a seance have sage is like, no, don't want sage before a seance. Um, but Palo Santo gets rid of the negative stuff or the dark stuff, but not the good stuff. Because uh, so have some, it, you could use it a little bit before, but afterwards, and that's what even Billy does. Sage, I'm just leaving everything here, everything here. If you do use sage, like for clearing your house, it's just, it almost creates a vacuum. It's so harsh. It's like, say I say, I, I hear it every day. I sage my house, but it feels icky again. It's like, I go, say so they sage their house and it's so harsh. It almost creates a vacuum. So it's like dusting your house and then leaving the doors and windows open in a sandstorm. That's what mm -hmm. just saging. But if you yeah. do use sage, make sure you do it counterclockwise. Getting rid of is always counterclockwise. Okay. And then come back through with a sweet incense, frankincense, myrrh, something oh. angelic, anything holy or sandalwood yeah. and fill the space back up. So there's not that vacuum, fill it up with love, carry a candle into the room. I'm putting love and light into this room. And then there's not room for that negative to get back. So cascarilla powder, a symbol or sigil, whether you don't have to have a necklace of it, stick it in your pocket, a good luck thing that you've charged as such, whatever it means. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is be very careful. Um, it's different than a seance because it's seance I've who I'm calling in. You're talking to the spirits there, but call in your protections. Like I said, if you work with angelic energy, angels, if you work with dragons, work with dragons, work with G the Christ light, uh, all good, all beautiful, just different renditions of light. Um, but afterwards, you no, know, when you're in there, don't give up control just like we are in charge here show yourselves or not anything feels negative nope i'm not accepting that i'm putting a border around myself around my body um if you're using ghost equipment if you're using ouija boards or ghost radar they're all the same people are so afraid of ouija boards but then they'll use a pendulum or dowsing rods or ghost okay. meter or emf meter it's just modern technology of the same thing be kind of very careful that you're not opening a portal and not not closing it down afterwards and then after your investigation thank the spirits really and when you're coming in ask permission just like we are here we we know that this is your house and your ghost in a haunted place and even if it's a darker place, we, we are coming into your world. We know that. Be respectful. Show us yourself. Talk to us. We don't want to get harmed. You can't touch me. You put your boundaries out what you want. And then at the end, when you're leaving, very clearly, stay here. Nothing is allowed to come home with me. Nothing is allowed to get in the car with me. Nothing is allowed to go back home. That's when I would Palo Santo it out. Um, you know, or sage and then Palo Santo it out, use yeah. the cascarilla powder. Again, that helm of awe is something that doesn't conflict with anybody's religious system. It's, it's sacred geometry. It's that eight sided cross with the little, the little Neptune, Neptune trident on the end. So energy mm -hmm. just blows up. Yeah. yeah I want to yeah. um, sure. become just something that will work that with, within your belief system, mm -hmm. even if it's a new belief system for you and then have fun with it. Yeah. yeah, be respectful of spirits and have fun. What kind of a place are you going? It's called the Octagon Mansion. So we're in Northern Virginia. So this place is in like Southwestern Virginia, closer to Tennessee. Wow. So we're going with a paranormal team that's from um, Eastern Tennessee. 
Awesome. So, yeah. Have fun. Well, that's good because they probably know what they're doing as far as the paranormal investigation. Your yeah. first or few times going out, it's good to go with a team who knows what they're doing. Yeah. It really right. is. Yeah. Because again, number one, they have the equipment. And number two, they understand it. And number three, they probably learn the, the what works and doesn't work. Yeah. And then have fun. And then go, we're done. Yeah. Out home. And then always to ground if you do get into other worldly places, which can happen. Um, eat eat salt or touch iron that grounds you i do it after my seances oh. carry a bag of popcorn or potato chips in your car get mundane so if it's like wow we expect everybody you kind of get into a spacey space like you had a drink or something and you didn't mm -hmm. um we, when you're going into these other realms or a place where the veil is really lifted just eat salt eat salt get grounded touch iron if you could find any iron but salt will ground you like the that. place we're staying at actually has an a wrought iron fence around oh, it. See? So you grab onto the right iron. <laughs> I've done that a million. I've grabbed onto big old iron dumpsters, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm dumpster diving right here, right now. I'm grounding. Yeah. I'm grounding. Oh, yeah. happening. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So okay. that's what I do. So yeah. So um, you guys, thank you for having me on. My name is Patty Negri. Um, find me on all the social medias. PattyNegri.com is my website. Sign up for my newsletter. That's it's kind of like my little moments of magic that come through too. I say I do send it every month, but I do about four a year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. I'm busy. I don't try to when you get it. Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't try to sell anything or anything. It's just my little ha, monthly newsletter. But sign up for that. Um, Facebook is Patty Negri Psychic Medium is my best one. I can't Patty Negri. It's hard. You could follow me at Patty Negri, but I can't have any more friends. Facebook is so mean. Um, Instagram it's Patty dot Negri. Twitter is at Patty Negri. YouTube my YouTube page. I, where I do have some of my, which is uh, my Hollywood Boulevard, where you can learn to do a safe seance. You could learn some spell casting. Um, on my Hollywood Boulevard, it's a very short series, but it's a series and some of my TV stuff before they take it down. Because this copyright bill, they take almost everything down. But no. <laughs> what do you do? But yeah, so that's Patty Negri. I've written bathroom walls across America. Google me. <laughs> thank you so much for thank being you. on our thank show, you. Patty. Thank you. Thank you guys. You guys are fabulous. I, thank you, you for finding fabulous. me. You guys are great. We're hoping to talk much. again. Bye. I'd love it. Bye. <laughs>